apparently Kurt Vonnegut said, if you put brown ants and red ants in a jar, they won't kill each other. But if you start, if you shake the jar, they will begin to kill each other. Red ants will think of the black ants as their enemy and vice versa. So the question is, who's shaking the jar? If you're in a group and they're constantly telling you, my goodness, your money's going to dissolve, you won't have food or everything you hold holy and dear is going to be ripped out from your hands and that message is repeated over and over and over again you're going to build up a lot of stress and a lot of fear and anxiety and that makes us susceptible when i worked in the former yugoslavia you know i remember i was you know relatively young when i went i was 28 and i was like how does this happen how does this happen how does neighbor you know, people would tell me stories like, yeah, we'd live next door to our neighbors for, you know, generate, you know, for 40 years and we'd never had any problems with them. And then they got their pitchforks and came after us one night. And it's like, how does that happen? You know, but one of the ways that happened was just like you're saying, Joseph, the media, the, the, the Serbs, the, um, you know, elements of the Serbian government started transmitting propaganda. Uh-huh. You'd better be worried about your, you know, your Bosn- your Bosnian Muslim neighbor because he might come get you. And so then that motivated people to take up arms. And it's, you know, we 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 can easily be um, agitated. You know, I I saw something. I saw. A, a meme on social media. I have no idea. I haven't verified it. I should have verified it before I started recording this morning. But apparently Kurt Vonnegut said, and I don't know if this is true, but it's still a great metaphor. If you put brown ants and red ants in a jar, they won't kill each other. But if you start, if you shake the jar, they will begin to kill each other. And the red ants will think of the black ants as their enemy and vice versa. So the question is, Who's shaking the jar? Mm. It's a powerful metaphor. Wow, yeah. that is that yeah. is really great. I love yeah. that. And, mm-hmm. and it really um, depicts how easily agitated we are. Yeah. Yes. You know, I think we like to think when we're adults that we're really in charge of ourselves and we're aware and rational and capable and all that good stuff. We are a species just like zebra or buffalo. Or the ants. Uh, the ants, herd animals in particular. Uh, we like to bond, we like to belong, uh, and we are more fragile and more easily agitated than we like to think we are. And that goes to what you were saying, Joseph, about, you know, the, the, then the group that is agitated looks for a leader. Mm-hmm. Because that will coalesce the group around a center point and provide some, perhaps, illusion or del- delusion of uh, cohesiveness and stability, uh, et cetera. And, and, and quite so. So mm-hmm. groups now can be manipulated, mm-hmm. and then they can be kind of terrorized or at least put under stress. So. If you're in a group and they're constantly telling you, you're at risk, you're at risk, or your money is going to, my goodness, your money is going to dissolve, or these people are going to take it over, or you won't have food, or everything you hold holy and dear is going to be right. ripped out from your hands. Yes. And that message is repeated over and over and over again. Um, if you're susceptible to that, you're going to build up a lot of stress mm-hmm. and a lot of fear and anxiety. Mm-hmm. and that makes us susceptible. Right. One of the things that I find so uncanny, and I've even seen this with my friends, is that when people are highly susceptible, they begin to repeat slogans, mm-hmm. which are childlike solutions, like burn it all down. Mm-hmm. Right. Or, oh, sleepy Joe, nasty woman. Like the kinds of three word responses, yeah. three word framings that all of a sudden seem brilliant. Oh, oh, oh that's it. That's the problem. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it must, it, it can all be summed up in three words. Let's, let's launch. Uh, let's, mm-hmm. let's do it. 
Right. And so that's a great point, Joseph. I think anytime that you, you notice a group, uh, you, you know, relying on slogans, it really kind of replaces thought. Right. And it's an oversimplified right. answer. But I, I want to say something at this point, and I'm, I'm sure I'll say it again, is that mm-hmm. as we're talking about this, I would like to issue a challenge both to us and to our listeners. It's very easy to notice these dynamics in groups you don't like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so as we're circumambulating this, just think uh, the groups that I'm aligned with, the groups that I participate in, where are these dynamics there? Because um, they may be more egregious in some parts of the culture. Um, but I think we can probably all find mm-hmm. it in every corner. And it's good to be aware of that. Um, I do just want to bring in our friend Carl for a second. Here's just a little quote. He says things like this repeatedly in the collected works. He says, the the elementary axiom of mass psychology is that the individual becomes morally and spiritually inferior in the mass. So he really, you know, Joseph, and what you were talking about, the participation mystique, you know, he, he really felt like, um, there's a kind of lowering of the state of consciousness when we're acting in a group. A regression. Yeah, a regression. Absolutely. So, uh, and mean, we divide, we divide into us and them mm-hmm. uh, readily, easily, uh, and uh, we can see it all the time. Um, we can certainly see it in demonstrations and slogans and so on. Uh, And this goes to the concept of shadow. Um, You know, as what happens out there, it has a corollary inside us of the other group, them, they. (laughs) That's not me. It has nothing to do with my shadow. Uh, What I have disowned. Uh, it's clear cut. It's binary, mm-hmm. and, and it's amazing how easily we can be agitated. The jar can be shaken, and the red ants and the black ants go at it. It happens in groups, and it happens internally. So, coming back to Kernberg's work. Mm-hmm. He found a way of describing the large group regressions into two categories. One he thought of as a dependency group, and the other as a fight or flight group. And so, under stress, the dependency groups are characterized by a general sense of insecurity, uncertainty, and immaturity. And that group is looking for a particular kind of leader who can provide direction, security, and meet Mm -hmm. their needs. And this is essentially a parental figure. So they'll often seek somebody who is self-assured, knowledgeable, somewhat um, parental. And this kind of a leader will often reassure the group. And in that way becomes idealized in an almost virtuous or moral standing. Mm -hmm. And the promise is you'll be safe and secure. Mm. And and that kind of a leader um, has a tendency to have a a soothing, almost Mm -hmm. sleepy, comforting effect on the group. Yeah. Kernberg uses the term tranquilizing. Tranquilizing. Wow. 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 He mentioned a third one too, didn't he? The um, the pairing that wants a, a leader that has charisma. I think he said erotic, but I would translate it as charisma. Uh, someone who's exciting and dynamic. Uh, and then we can pair. Well, I think that that goes, is a little more present in the fight or flight group. Ah. Where the fight or flight group is characterized by tension and conflict and readiness for combat. <laughs> and they are, you know, looking at the outgroup, the dangerous people out there, and that group is brought together through the idea of the common 
enemy and is maintained through a sense of shared combativeness. And that kind of a leader is often strong and self-righteous, distrustful, controlling, and capable of directing the group in its struggles against enemies. And that kind of a group, there's a very strong us and them. Yeah. And that encourages more of that splitting and projection onto the adversaries. So this, the group that's looking for soothing and reassurance, and then the group that's looking to fight. And I think that the malignant narcissism seems to be more involved with the group that's looking for combat mm. than for soothing. Well, and they, and, and he talks specifically yeah. about how that, that, uh, fight or flight group really, um, engenders and seeks a kind of paranoia and that there could be a strong strain of paranoia in, in the leader, but also in the group itself where, you know, you're, you you sort of see enemies around every corner. And of mm-hmm. course, it's very easy to manipulate and control people when they're afraid. And we can all think back to 9-11. Mm-hmm. You know, the United States, uh, all of us as Americans, we most of us had never experienced anything like that on American soil. And I remember being, you know, tremendously affected. I remember the first time I was in an airport after 9-11 and I saw armed soldiers in the airport. Yeah. I, I felt tearful with gratitude mm-hmm. that, that someone was there to take care of me and to take care of us which is very much that large group regression. I felt yeah. like a child and I was looking to this armed uh-huh. authority yeah. to keep me safe. And right. I, and I was all in yeah. uh, at that point. So it was, it really constellated, you know, that wish uh, for leadership in a kind of parental authoritative way, um, but take care to protect Right. I was on a plane after 9-11 on September 17th, and of course the plane was possibly one-third full because people had canceled, yeah. and there were men uh, across the aisle and, uh, you know, within easy eyesight of one another, and they talked about how they would fight if anything happened. You know, do we all agree we'll, we'll fight if anybody tries anything? Uh, we're just so permeable and and easily affected as humans, how we're made. And I suppose if we are responding to an actual threat, it may, I'm sure it has helped us as a species to survive by Mm -hmm. coming together as a group and facing true dangers. Mm -hmm. Where I think Kernberg was interested, as was Jung, as were many who observed World War II particularly, is seeing how vulnerable we are to neurotic and illusory Mm -hmm. stressors. Mm -hmm. Or those that have been created by manipulative actors. Exactly. And, And that is, well, of course, as we know, is incredibly dangerous. Mm hmm. And there's a way of manipulating this core level of the psyche in individuals yeah. and people who normally would behave in very sophisticated, thoughtful ways right. Mm-hmm. Right. wind up in a feverish yeah. um, alignment. Yeah. You know, I want to, uh, this brings up for me, Lisa, what you did just a little while ago and when you uh, to- gave us the metaphor of the ants in a jar. Mm -hmm. Uh, You cited the source and then you said, but I haven't verified it. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, there is um, a small point that's a big point that we have to verify what we think is happening today because we are easily agitated. And if we see something on social media that says, in effect, the sky is falling, we need to verify it. Where do we go to make sure that's true? Uh, Just like you said, wait a minute. Um, 
I would need to really verify the source here. <laughs> 